Greetings, YouTube. When we consume fantasy settings, most of us want the eternal Middle Ages. A little mix of the really early Middle Ages and a little mix of the older, uh, of the later Middle Ages, up to like when, when the uh, Enlightenment began to kick in. But for the most part, we want the Middle Ages. We want kings and queens. We want baronesses and dukes. We want viscountesses. We want knights and maidens and serfs and maybe a burgeoning middle uh, merchant class, that kind of thing. Uh, we want all of that. We love it. We eat it up. As a thousand sources of, uh, of uh, fantasy settings have shown us. From Tolkien um, all the way up to the latest things being put forth by Wizards of the Coast and every other gaming uh, company. We like the Eternal Middle Ages. So why am I talking about this in a Fallout video? Well, the people are producing the Fallout world are presenting the consumer audience with the post-apocalyptic setting they want. Not a post-apocalyptic setting, which is the logical conclusion of the events that start the apocalypse. So Bethesda isn't saying, okay, this is the, what starts the apocalypse, boom, and then we take the logical progressions from there on. No, this is what starts the, the, the apocalypse. And as soon as the survivors dust the nuclear fallout off their body, that's where we stop. We go no further. We do not develop the world beyond that initial one to two year period. We're done. Forever, that is the world we're going to give the consumer audience because that's what the consumer audience wants. Which is why, in the latest version of Fallout, I've been watching three different people play it. Um, it's 210 years in the future, and it looks like it was the apocalypse was last year. That makes no logical sense. If you follow a, the conclusions, if you say, okay, this is what happens, and then humans kick in their natural instincts, their natural behaviors, when it comes to a disaster, this is what you get. XYZ falls, in, falls in, in, into place. Bethesda hasn't done that. And that's what I have, have, I've had to get myself into the frame of mind. I started watching Gophers playthrough first. Now I'm also watching Lumens and Zistos, both of which were very entertaining. These are three people I really respect and I really enjoy their playthroughs. Not all of them. Lumens been putting a lot of stuff out that I have absolutely no interest in. But now he's putting a couple things out that I am interested in. And then Zisto does a lot of Minecraft stuff, and I really like that. And Gopher does all kinds of things, not all of which I'm interested in. But I am interested in the Fallout 4 videos, because I like the world they're presenting to me, because it reminds me of the kind of setting I would present to my players in a Game World campaign. And yes, I am guilty of the same thing, an eternal apocalypse. I have some progress once the game rolls, but up until then, I've put progress on stasis. Much like the character is in Fallout 4. That's not a spoiler. It takes place in the first 15 or 20 minutes of the, of, of, of the game. Um, and because that's what the audience wants, that's fine. The storyteller in me screams when I see this stuff, though. The storyteller is in me, the historian in me, the person that understands how humans react to disasters. And what they can do with their environment around them. The junk smith in me just goes bananas. Because 210 years, the world would be Star Trek. It wouldn't be a frozen time capsule of the apocalypse. The tech level would be higher than it was before the war. All right, and even if he showed up 20 years later, there would be no resources that he's seeing lying around. No car wrecks, no tires, no barrels, no buildings. If they hadn't been repaired and occupied, they would have been raised down to the foundations for their resources, and people may have been completely rebuilt from that point up. It doesn't take a lot of technology to rebuild your world. Lumber, bricks, stone foundations, all of those can be produced without electricity. You can use water power, you can use steam power, you can use muscle power, horsepower, or Brahmin power, I suppose, in the Fallout universe. You don't need electricity, but Fallout 4, the Fallout universe has electricity everywhere. 
You can't shake a dead rad roach without smacking something that's got an electrical power source in it. Okay? So the jump start of the recovery would be so much faster. And you were supposed to believe that 210 years after the, the apocalypse, all these buildings are still standing, but they're empty? No. They would have been reoccupied or torn down and used for resources. The lumber, the roofing materials, the pipes, the wiring, all of it is incredibly valuable. Particularly because if you use these things, you're not wasting time recreating them yourself. Yes, you can make lumber from trees. But it's a lot easier to just use the house over there that no one's occupying anymore because all the family members are dead and you've already cleaned out all the things that are mobile. So now it's time to take the thing apart, maybe reuse it, or rebuild it and occupy it yourself. And speaking of nature, nature would have roared back. Chernobyl and Fukushima have shown us that in the event of nuclear disaster, nature just rolls right in. There is no barren wasteland left. And if you have broken the ecology to the point where that is the world, then humanity is gone. Then, then, then the oxygen cycle of the planet has been broken. And life is gone. Or it's reduced to the point where all that's left are rad roaches. Maybe they'll evolve to come up with a more sensible universe than the Fallout 4 one presented to us. So I understand why this exists. I get it. That's what people want. But the storyteller, the extrapolator inside me, goes nuts when I see these things. Because they're not taking things to their logical conclusion. That's one of the reasons that Star Trek drives me nuts. They never did that. Ever. they bring a cool idea, and it would never be used again. Sky High. There's a cool weapon in there that turns people into babies. Gee, if you tune that down a little bit, you've just created the Fountain of Youth, and you are a trillionaire. Screw being the, the master universe because you're an evil genius. You're the master universe because anyone will do anything to, de to come to you and become eternally young. So when you don't do that, it bugs me. And yet, I love Gamma World. Just like Fallout 4, the eternal apocalypse. Humans are complex. Now, is there anything that bugs you about Fallout 4? In the storyline concept, I mean. Do anything in there that gets to you is like, okay, well, if this exists, why doesn't that exist? That kind of thing. Because that kind of thing bugs me all the time. Because if you've shown that, that you know, X exists, and Y would follow, and they don't do that often. So Fallout 4 isn't as bad as some, isn't as bad as Star Trek in that regard. Um, but the main character can scrap everything he lays eyes on. But all the NPCs can't. Because obviously they didn't, because all this stuff is still sitting there, waiting for him. I understand why they did this. You want to be you don't want to turn this into Minecraft where he has to go and dig up the resources he needs. You just want the resources readily available. He can scrap them, he can turn them into other things. It's cool. The fabrication system in Fallout 4 is awesome. The weapon modification in Fallout 4 is awesome. I haven't seen the drug chemical system used all that much yet, but I'm sure it's equally good. They've done an excellent job. And yes, I like the dog, even though he's indestructible. I don't want to see the dog die. I like the dog. Um, oh yes, I thought I'd throw something in here I saw recently. I saw just today as, the, as of the filming of this video. If you want the, the cryolator in the first couple of episodes, get the dog, have him fetch it for you. There you go. A little caveat for you. Have at it. So I'm going to go now because the washing machine is making noise in the background, I apologize. I forget it's on when I start my videos. I really do. I just don't hear it. Um, but it's making noise. And I think I've made my point. So, tell me, what about Fallout 4 do you love? And what about Fallout 4 makes you pull your hair out? Obviously, it had a big effect on me.